Hello, pure belonging friends. I'm tuning in to talk about something that's been coming up a lot in recent days, in recent weeks, and it's the way that our eating patterns might be changing. And there's already articles out there talking about food scarcity and what our bodies do at times that are uncertain. And I just want you to kind of pause for a moment and go in and explore and see what has your body been doing in the last couple of weeks. For me, this started a little earlier um, because my home country of Bulgaria, where I do quite a bit of work, um, have quite a few clients there, shut down earlier. And so I got to go through a lot of the um, emotions, a lot of the memories, a lot of the kind of inner adaptations earlier than it started coming here as a wave in the United States. And depending on which state you're in, like it went into Seattle first, but then, you know, soon other states followed. Depending on when it came, you had your own process with what it means for you in your daily life to be in this um, situation right now that we're all in. And so just tune in and just see what your body's been doing. Maybe you've been snacking more, maybe you've lost all appetite, maybe you're going for um, these foods that are packaged that are more convenient, or maybe you've returned to some recipes from your childhood. I spoke to a, a friend yesterday and we were um, just observing together how she's been eating foods that, you know, normally feed little kids. The ki we call it kindergarten food, right? Between the two of us. And whatever pattern you find, let's just name the pattern. Like, oh, I've lost all appetite. Or I can't eat with others. I have to eat alone. Or um, maybe I'm way into like a more of a rigid orthorexic kind of um you know i'm controlling my food making sure it's super healthy and i'm really careful to avoid sugar whatever you're going into and um look at that pattern name it and let's just include it and hold it as the wisest thing that your system is doing right now is the wisest adaptation try to remove all sorts of thinking and judgment and guilt and shame like oh this is what i think about my body's doing these are my fears about what my body's doing um things like am i going to gain weight am i going to get sick am i eating in a way that's giving a bad example to my children if we remove all these thoughts and just leave the pattern Leave it as like pure pattern. We're just looking at it. This is what my body is doing. And let's look at it with respect. And let's look at it as a wise adaptation. If it's an old pattern that you felt you overcame, it still came into your life as a wise adaptation. It was there for a reason the first time it appeared. Maybe the first time you started really limiting sugar and gluten and being very careful about what you're eating, maybe the first time you did that was when you were actually ill. You were just diagnosed with something. And that was your way to feel a little bit more in charge of the situation. Maybe that was your way to follow doctor's orders for some of you. Maybe that was your way to decrease the amount of fear you're feeling. I'm afraid that my body's not working right and I also fear these foods and if I decrease the fear of the foods by not eating them, then also I'm less afraid overall because there's this underlying um, baseline of fear. And when I'm also adding these foods, now I'm afraid of the food. So the fear, the fear gets bigger. So I wanna decrease the food so I feel a little bit more settled in myself and I can get through my day. 
So that could have been it. For some of us, there's lots of images of our childhood emerging. Those of us that went through years without food and empty shelves and different uh, socioeconomic, sociopolitical changes, political trauma, economic trauma, our families losing all of our money, actually not having food for a very long time. So that might be emerging too. So whatever the pattern that you're observing in is, you're observing yourself in the midst of this behavior. I'm eating the snacks or I'm going to the grocery store and buying more than I need. Whatever the behavior is or I'm eating compulsively or if I've lost all my appetite, whatever it is, looking at it as a wise adaptation and going one step below that, like we're looking at the adaptation and that's kind of like ground level but the basement is really deep. So going one level below that and seeing, wow, maybe there was a time in my life or epigenetically, there was a time in my ancestors' lives that that was the wisest adaptation. And let's become curious to see what is it that your body is perceiving it is adapting to. Thomas Hubel, who I love, just such a wonderful teacher presence in my life, says every dysfunction has a function that you don't know about yet. Sometimes in culture, we're quick to label the body as bad. Oh, my body is doing this thing and it's bad and it's scaring me and it's knocking me off my agenda for my body, whether it's to... I want a strong immune system or it's I want my body to be this shape and my body's becoming this shape and I don't like it. So oftentimes the body and what the body goes to is considered as some sort of a either like a nuisance or a frustration. People get mad. Why is it doing this? But in this moment, you have a unique opportunity to look out and look at everyone else out there and to know, oh, it's not just my body. Every body on this planet who's in this situation, consciously or unconsciously, is doing some sort of an adaptation. Some people know about it, some people don't. Some people could care less about their food behaviors. They're watching the stock market and they're really not aware whether they've eaten or not eaten or drank or not drank or whether their throat today is a little, uh, right, a little coarser. They don't care. They don't feel their body. It's not a thing for them at all to worry about their, <clears throat> whether their weight or their health. It's like a realm that they're not aware of. There are those people too. And even for them, something is happening, whether they're aware of it or not. And then there's those of us who have been in health and wellness and fitness and well-being and natural health for such a long time that we have a history as long as our lives around food. We have behaviors as long as our lives about our food. And some of us are also carrying layers of inherited political and other trauma that is surfacing now to be witnessed. And so I just want you to really become curious. I want to invite you to become curious and not make the body bad. Because to the degree to which we make the body bad, we're at the, the, the kind of the ground level and we're just watching the behavior. Here's the behavior and I don't like it. And we just stop. It stops right there. It's like um, if you have a small child and your child is... Um, really upset about something and you say I don't like how I feel when my child is upset and you stop there and so the relationship the relationship between you and the child in that moment is severed and the child cannot get your help and you're just left feeling kind of the, the frustration but the reality is, is in that moment, you could become curious about what's happening for your child, 
and then you can give them the right support and this is like that with our own kind of inner world as well as we kind of parent ourselves as adults it's one of the privileges of adulthood is you get to parent in a way that you actually know yourself you know yourself and you get to do really attuned beautiful parenting because you know our parents at best kind of tried to get it right because they couldn't know but now we know as adults we know and so coming back to that idea of scarcity that could be a tag for some people it just tags and opens something in you like there's a time capsule sitting in there and it opens of all sorts of behaviors and thoughts and images and emotions it is the problem is not the scarcity it's what it's touching because in this moment we can to a degree be creative about bringing more in if we really need it we can be creative we can reach out I just heard a story from a friend of mine who works for a medical supply company and she posted in her local community uh, whether somebody needed something and someone needed 99% alcohol and she had that in stock so she could just bring it to the lady that night so here's a you know I don't have this and there's creative ways that some of what we really need might be received but there's also the perceived scarcity and what that means and I want you to really go in give yourself some time wisely investigate go one level under and see what it might be that you're actually responding to because you might be responding to something that's absolutely not about the present moment and then you'd have the space to actually have the space to respond to the present moment instead of here's all my responsive space is taken up by you know years and years and years and sometimes it's hundreds of years and thousands of years of things that are arising can I be with what's really here which includes I'm not going to judge myself or shame myself or feel guilty or fear monger whatever it is or make the body bad for having the wisest response that at some point was helpful might not be helpful right now but at some point it was helpful and those of you who have taken the peace with food uh, introduction an urban retreat or a workshop you know the neurobiology of why you eat the way you do you understand the window of tolerance and you understand how when we're outside of a window of tolerance it is paramount your body in that moment wants to come back to homeostasis it wants to breathe normally it wants to digest its food normally it wants to bring heart rate and blood pressure back to normal and that will not be happening unless you're doing some sort of a behavior to bring yourself back in unless you have training how to do it but most people don't so we just go to what worked what once worked what worked 10 years ago or 30 years ago what worked the first time it happened what worked in embodied memory for an ancestor that's where we go when we don't have in the moment present time tools to observe be with the autonomic nervous system reactions whether you're more in a hyper or in a hypo kind of response it doesn't matter where your body is all it matters is that you can bring yourself in and give your body the support that it needs and that includes going one level deeper so may this information be in some way supportive whatever touches you in a way that makes sense follow that I'm open to any comments and questions and um, I look forward to being your support in this time helping you make sense of food behaviors in a way that might for some of you be entirely new and so if you recognize yourself in, um, in, in a pattern right now no you're not alone we're all going through it whether we are aware or we're not aware we're all going through it we're going through it together and um, there is um, there's healing in the pain there's transcendence in the pain there's integration in the pain there are things that have been waiting to be digested psycho-emotionally for a very long time and this is an opportunity that we don't continue a cycle of violence with the body but we can come 
into a connection, a friendly connection. We can befriend the body and we can become better at listening and we can become partners. We can be on our own behalf with our bodies. I hope that this was helpful. I'm going to sign off and um, I wish you a wonderful day.